Welcome back to the Game Masters Academy. Uh, this is the show where we strive to make every single session that you have great. Thank you for joining me. My name is Greg. If you're just starting out as a DM and looking for additional resources, or maybe you've been a DM for a, a long time and are just looking for additional uh, ways to spark your creativity again, you have found the correct location. Uh, today we're going to be looking at an additional uh, segment of Combat Corner. Uh, this is the uh, segment where we basically take a look at an encounter every single week and talk about the level for your party, as well as potentially upgrading one or two or however many of the monsters within the uh, creature list to include legendary actions or layer actions to potentially increase the challenging uh, level of the actual encounter itself. Uh, so for this week, what we want to look at is going to be a Frost Giant, as well as a Young Remerhaz. I don't really know for sure if that's how you say that, but that's what it looks like. Remerhaz? Whatever. Um, we'll start with the Remerhaz first. Uh, it is a large monstrosity. We're going to be looking at the monster manual to find that on page 258. Uh, a young one is a CR5 monster, uh, and then it has uh, some unique abilities. Uh, the, the first thing would be Tremor Sense of 60 feet, as well as uh, something called Heated Body. Uh, we'll take a look at Tremor Sense first. Uh, Tremor Sense uh, basically gives the creature awareness of others around it within its range, which would be 60 feet, as long as that other creature is standing on the ground. Uh, specifically, the way it's set up, it says, a, uh, just reading it, a monster with tremor sense can detect and pinpoint the origin of vibrations within a specific radius, provided that the monster and the source of the vibrations are in contact with the same ground or substance. Tremor sense can't be used to detect flying or incorporeal creatures. Many burrowing creatures, such as ank eggs, have this special sense. A couple things to note about tremor sense is it is a radius from the creature, uh, as well as a surface. So it doesn't really matter what you're on. Uh, if the remmer has is on snow or on ice, it's still able to detect creatures moving with on, uh, on top of it uh, out to 60 feet. If it's burrowed underneath the ground and buried, then it is able to detect creatures that are above it up to 60 feet. So just some ideas to keep in mind there as we uh, take a look at what this encounter uh, works as. Uh, they also have uh, something called Heated Body. Uh, it's a creature that touches the uh, rumor has, has its, uh, and hits with a melee attack uh, while within 5 feet of it takes 2d6 fire damage. And then its bite does some additional fire damage as well. Now, one of the things to note on this is that the young Remmer has, uh, specifically, it says frost giant hunters scour the icy wastes for nests and eggs, which the giants prize, uh, which can be, uh, the young Remmer has can be trained from hatching to obey commands and guard the giant's icy citadels. Unlike fully grown ones, they don't swallow their victims whole, they gnaw on them. Ouch. Uh, but... The idea here is you're basically uh, a big, giant, weird monster bug dog uh, for a frost giant. So then when we take a look at the frost giant itself, uh, it, like most giants, uh, frost giants are basically just a giant pile of hit points that hit like a truck. Uh, Great Axe does 3d12 plus 6 slashing damage, and it makes 2 attacks per turn. And so you've got this giant, uh, as well as his little pet Remerhaz that are off potentially in the icy wastes together that your party either comes across or gets hunted. And uh, that's where we basically have things start. Uh, both of these creatures are very straightforward. Uh, you basically hit stuff with an axe, as well as uh, bite things with the Remerhaz. That's pretty much it. If something's outside the range, you can whip a rock at it with the giant, but it's basically just kind of... It's the barbarian of creatures to fight. Uh, it does have cold immunity, uh, that is, uh, as well. And so, 
uh, what you know the idea or the way that this particular combat goes down is your party uh, either triggers the Remmer has burrowed you know burrowed underneath the ground and starts combat that way or is being hunted by the frost giant Remmer has maybe they've done something wrong in an Arctic area and somebody, hired the frost giant or challenged the frost giant to be able to, you know, kill the party first. And so this is a frost giant hunter that's coming out after the group. Alternatively, they could come across the uh, the two individuals and uh, basically uh, have a way to be, uh, attack them and uh, initiate it themselves. That's obviously really up to you and the way that your particular campaign is set up. So if we're using this encounter as the, you know, the climax or the uh, pinnacle of our uh, quest that the character or the party is currently on, we need to add some adjustments. Uh, yes, the Frost Giant hits hard. And yes, the Remmer has, has the heated body ability to punish those that attack it. But realistically speaking, uh, this count encounter, a CR8 and a CR5, um, to work it together for a hard, to make it a hard combat encounter for a group of four, uh, that seems reasonable, would need to be uh, four characters of ninth level. Well, ninth level characters are going to have access to fifth level spells. And that's the point where spells start basically mimicking the abilities of being able to pretend to be a deity for a short period of time in most games. Uh, and so we need to do some things to our frost giant here to allow him to be able to um, challenge the party in a way that is respectable enough to be considered the boss of a main plot line. So there's a couple of things that we are going to need to add to the frost giant. The very first thing is going to be legendary resistance. And so we want to add that legendary resistance so that way our frost giant here doesn't instantaneously just get completely hosed by a failed wisdom save considering it has a plus zero. Next, we want to give it legendary actions. Just as a quick reminder, legendary actions, uh, typically you get three per round. And that is something that you use at the end of a different creature's turn. It doesn't matter if it's the party or the young Remmer has or another frost giant somewhere. Uh, but they're used at the end of another creature's turn. Um, and then depending on the action that you take, typically uses one or two of the um, three legendary actions. And then every time it's the frost giant's turn, it regains the three uses for the next round of combat. So for legendary actions for this particular Frost Giant, we definitely want to include attack. So it can just make attack uh, within range, which means it could also hurl a boulder. We want to give it command, where it can command the yum, uh, young Remmer has to be able to make an attack using its reaction. Next, what we want to do is provide layer actions for this particular Frost Giant. Again, refresher. A layer action is something that happens at initiative 20. There's generally speaking multiple and you are unable to use the same one two turns in a row. And in order to use the first one you used, you have to use all available options before you can go back to one of the ones you've already used. It's typically something to do with the environment itself or more along the lines of something just to the general nature of the creature. So, for example, um, a dragon's lair could potentially collapse a stalactite down on the party, just to give you an idea. So, for this particular combat encounter, uh, the frost giant needs to be able to create the effects of Sleet Storm. And you can have him basically be uh, the one that casts it, or you can have it be just the innate nature of the area of the Arctic that this frost giant is in. Uh, and that would be able to cast Sleet Storm in the area. Uh, Sleet Storm causes, I should say, forces concentration checks on spellcasters. 
it completely uh, heavily obscures the area that it's in. So that means you know, people are not able to see. And then the last thing that it would do is uh, you have to roll a dexterity save. And if you fail, you start your prone basically slipping on the ice and falling on your butt. And then have to use half your movement to stand back up from prone. So that's a great opportunity for us to give some battlefield control uh, as well as place this on top of spellcasters that are concentrating on their spells. Not only that, but because of the heavy obscurement and the fact that the Remer has has Tremor Sense, you're giving the Remer has advantage on its attacks on anybody within the area that Sleet Storm falls. Lastly, for layer actions, I like the idea of mimicking the dragon's lair a little bit here. And whether that's that we create an area that the snow collapses and, you know, part of the party or one member of the party gets buried in snow, or if you're having this entire combat happen uh, near an ice citadel and they can shatter the ice underneath one person that fails a dexterity save and they fall in the water, that works too. So the environmental hazard that we are going to be looking at, uh, typically around this level, I would say a DC uh, 17, 16, somewhere in that range, uh, to dexterity, to avoid either being buried in snow or falling in the water, whichever works better for your specific location that the combat would be occurring. Also, we need to give Sleet Storm a DC as well. And so I would do the exact same thing. Whatever the DC that you use for Sleet Storm uh, should be the same thing that you use for the uh, snowfall slash falling in the water uh, type layer actions. And so that kind of rounds out your layer actions uh, just using those two. And then obviously legendary actions were the ability to attack or command the young Remmer has to attack. And then uh, legendary resistances for this frost giant. Now... This is set up as a, relatively speaking, hard combat for a party of four level nine characters. Adding these additions to it are going to take it from hard to being very challenging. So I would potentially, if this is gonna be used as a culmination for a quest, um, do this type of thing for a level 10 party, or if there's one extra person uh, for the level nine, and that means that there's five people in the party. Just because those extra little things make it harder, which is the goal, but it also might uh, make it feel like there's no chance of winning uh, com comparatively, just because of how hard it hits and basically saying, nope, I succeed that saving throw with a legendary resistance, etc. So now that we have our adjustments to the creatures, we have a little bit of background on exactly who these creatures or how they know each other type of a deal. Um, this is the way that I would have the, the combat go if I was running this encounter as the culminating combat at the very end of a specific plot line. They're in the Arctic and they are tracking down the Jarl or head hunter or whatever guy that's been rampaging the nearby villages. So when frost giants um, rampage within a blizzard, uh, basically what happens is the blizzard happens and then they use that as their cover to come through and just completely rampage uh, a village. They uh, target inns to take alcohol. They target smithies to take the resources. And they pretty much leave the rich people alone because they don't care about money. And so the cities are consistently having to rebuild. It obviously creates tension. The party then gets involved and then gets sent off to try and find this particular guy that's been doing this over and over again. And so you get to his specific domain. Uh, he has these legendary actions. He's got his pet monster bug centipede looking thing uh, with the young Remmer has and uh, combat ensues. I would then utilize a icy floor um, as the area that I was fighting in. And uh, as a layer action, would end up using the collapsing the or breaking the ice underneath one particular party member if they fail a DC uh, 16 dexterity save. And then they would fall through into the ice. 
Uh, not doing a ton of damage, you know, 2d6 damage maybe for cold damage, um, but have that double every round that they're still within that ice, as well as uh, forcing them to basically use their almost all of their movement to get out of that ice and be able to rejoin the combat. Uh, so that's how this particular combat would be flavored. Be aware that a very easy counter to this would be one of the party members, most likely the wizard, casting fly on everybody. Because both of these are earthbound creatures with very few ranged attacks. So what I would say is that when I cast Sleet Storm, that specific thing for the lair actions would ground flying creatures within the storm due to the extremely high winds. And that would prevent us from just completely cheesing the fight with flight, but also that only happens every other round. And so because it only happens every other round, the uh, players do not have all of their agency removed. So there you have it. That's combat corner for the week. We're looking obviously at the frost giant. Young Remmer has the uh, legendary layer actions that have been added to it to help provide that additional punch as a little bit of a stronger encounter for your group of four level nine, ten ish players. Obviously, depending on if you've got a bunch of min maxers compared to those that are a little bit more focused on RP. Um, I appreciate each and every one of you joining me uh, for the Combat Corner for the week. Uh, thank you. And uh, just a quick announcement, I am planning on opening a Patreon uh, starting at the beginning of the year. And so that is designed as a way for uh, listeners to be able to show support. Uh, I appreciate every one of you that listens, um, whether you support the show uh, through Patreon or not. Uh, but what I'm also going to be doing, considering uh, I'll be using uh, utilizing World Builder, uh, the other section where we take a look at a homebrew setting on a monthly basis, is I'm going to be adding additional goodies. So uh, audio description of a shop, uh, you know, written personality of the shopkeeper or some other important NPC to the setting that we create, as well as a monster's stat block for some of the uh, larger or more important elements uh, within World Builder. So for the first one, which was Acheron, the Water World, I am going to be including a stat block for the Gale Warden. Uh, the guys that are responsible for basically moving the city away from the hazards that exist throughout the uh, planet that they're on. Uh, so that's uh, just something that's up and coming. Um, like I said, I appreciate every one of you that's uh, spending their time every week to, to you know hang out with me. Um, if that's something that you'd like to do for support, I appreciate it. Uh, if not, 